In this next part, what we're going to do is move this box over here in the right column over to the left column. Now one caveat to making this work is that in order to position this, we need to be using the context module instead of the default block setup. So if we're using the default block setup, I'm going to go ahead and go to structure blocks here. We position blocks by dragging them into the particular region that they should be displayed in. With context, however, let me go ahead and go there by clicking on structure, then context. We have this one blog context that was created with our feature module that we're manipulating here. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to scroll down. In context, we have conditions and reactions, and we'll explore this in other videos a little bit more, but the basic idea is that if certain conditions are met, in this case, it's a path condition, and the path needs to be blog or anything within blog, then we're going to react in some way, and in this case, we're displaying blocks. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here, and you see here are the regions where blocks can display, and we can set where a block is going to display by dragging it to the particular region here. Now context is far more flexible than using the default block setup because we can position blocks in different places on different parts of our site. And that flexibility also cascades to the hook function that we're going to use in order to manipulate the position of this block. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the overlay here. And I'm going to jump back to our code. And let's go ahead and open up this second step, which is called blog override module override context. And let's go ahead and copy the entire code and paste it over the code that's currently in the blog override.module file and save it. So we have our original code here. And now we've added this new function, which is pretty simple. This function implements hook context load alter, and it gets past a single parameter context, which is passed by reference. So again, any changes we make to it are persistent. And here we have where we're manipulating the context. Now this is a little complex here. We're looking at an array within an array, within an array, within one more array, within an object. And there's no way I could have guessed this particular structure. So using a debugger or some way to check out the contents of this variable is really important in this case. And all we're doing is setting the region here to sidebar first instead of sidebar second. Let's go ahead and take a look at the values inside of this context. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a breakpoint. I'm going to jump back to the site and start a debugging session, and I'm going to refresh. So it looks like our breakpoint didn't get triggered, and possibly this is because we need to clear the cache. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to, to Configuration, Performance, and then I'm going to clear the cache. Okay, now if we jump back to the editor, we'll see our breakpoint got triggered here when we cleared the cache. So sometimes these hooks aren't going to come into play until you clear the cache. So now we can take a look at this context object. You see our list of conditions and our list of reactions, which is pretty straightforward. We can expand the reactions. We see that we have block under our set of reactions. And then we have our set of blocks here. And then we have our box that we have set to display. If we expand that, we see a little bit of information about the block, what region it's supposed to be in, and also the weight. So you see we can actually change the order of the blocks by changing the weight, and we can reposition the block by changing the region. Or we can prevent the block from displaying at all by removing it from this block section. Let's go ahead and stop this debugging process, and I'm going to jump back here, and I'm going to exit out of the overlay and refresh the page. All right, so now you see our boxes on the left. 